how to actually judge whether an atom is stable or not. So in your textbook, they actually provide a very simple rule. If you see an atom that have even number of proton and neutron, then it will be actually stable. Another rule is that some of the atom will be super stable if they have the magic number of proton. And those number is 2A, 20A, 82, 20, 50, and 126. The way I memorize it is actually, it's just first row is actually a combination of 2 and A, right? 2, A, 20, A, 82. And then for the tens, you only have 20, 50. 126 is exception. So if you see an atom that contains these matching numbers of protons, they will be actually very stable. If today I give you an atomic symbol, you need to first judge is it stable or not. If it is not stable, it's undergo a radial decay, right? So in the question, it's actually going to ask what kind of radial decay you're going to see. Your textbook is going to tell you if you calculate the neutron to proton ratio, okay, which also highlight us the N to Z ratio. So the N is actually your neutron. Z is actually your proton. The neutron to proton ratio of atom. Your textbook say, okay, if your N to Z ratio is too high, then your neutrons are going to convert to proton through beta decay. If your N to Z ratio is too low, then your proton is going to convert to neutron via past strong emission or electro capture or alpha decay if the number of protons is actually larger than 83. So how do you define too high or too low? This is actually the table okay, you are going to use. So you can see these tables actually break into uh, four different rows. The first column tells you, depending on number of protons you have, I cut it into four different sections. 1 to 20, 20 to 40, 40 to 83, and larger than 83. Okay, you're going to have four different groups. For these four groups, you can know the atomic number from your periodic table, right? So every time you see an atomic symbol, you will know what the Z is already. Then you need to predict, okay, whether this is actually stable or not. So how do you actually know it's stable or not? The easiest way is actually that if the number of mass is outside your atomic mass plus minus two, then it is not stable. So the mass number is actually something that you are going to get from the questions. They will always, always give you a atomic symbol. For example, X, let's say 100. So they are going to always provide these things to you. How do you predict this is actually not stable? Of course, if it's actually larger than 83, it's never stable. So if Z is larger than 83, you know it's never stable. But if it's actually below to 83, then the way you judge whether this thing is actually stable or not is actually you compare the mass number here to the mass on your periodic tables. If the difference is actually larger than two, then you know it's not going to be stable. If it is not stable, you need to actually know the threshold. If the threshold, if it's larger than the threshold, then you're going to always, always get the beta decay. But if it's actually below the threshold, then for the first three one, you're going to get the positron emission or the electron capture. So the threshold for different rows is slightly different. So it varies from 1, 1.25, and 1.5. For the first three rows, if it's actually smaller than the threshold, all you get is positron emission or electron capture. But if your Z is larger than 83, the threshold becomes 1.6. So 1, 1 1.2, 1 1.5, 1 1.6. So for the first three rows, if it's actually lower than your threshold, all you get is actually positron emission or electron capture. But for the Z larger than 83, you're going to undergo alpha decay. But if it's actually larger than your threshold, all of them actually undergo a beta decay. So those are the tables you're going to use. Okay, eventually you to actually memorize this. We're going to go through a few examples now. I would suggest you actually put this table right next to you so you can actually reference back and forth. Okay, so here it says Y100 is radioactive. Okay, so this sentence alone already tell you the Y100, it's not stable. Because if it's stable, you won't undergo a radioactive process. So here you need to actually translate this. What is this? Okay, that 100 actually tells you the mass number. 
So you need to actually translate this guy into this. Then the next thing you need to actually focus on is actually what is the atomic number, right? So you're going to use your periodic table to find out what is the atomic number of Y. So if you look at this carefully, okay, you'll realize the atomic number is actually 39. So once you do this, then you should see that the number of protons is going to equal to 39. Number of neutrons is going to equal to your mass number minus your proton number. That's going to give you a number of 61. The next thing you do is actually you calculate your n to z ratio, right? So your n to z ratio is going to equal to 61 over 39, and that's going to equal to 1.56. You can see from the atomic numbers, you know it belongs to the second row of our table. So on the second row of the table, you know the threshold is 1.25. So the number we got is actually 1.56, which is actually larger than the 1.25 threshold. Therefore, you know this is actually larger than this threshold. Therefore, what you're going to have is just beta decay. That's how you actually use that table to make the prediction. Okay, so let's do another one, S28. So the first thing you do is actually looking for the atomic number of sulfur, right? So why is the atomic number of sulfur? It's 16, right? So you know the number of protons is going to equal to 16. The number of neutrons is going to equal to 28 minus 16, that's going to give you a value of 12. Therefore, you can calculate your n to z ratio. It's going to equal to 12 over 16, and that will give you a value of 0.75. So once you figure things out, then you go back to the table, right? So it's actually the number of protons is actually 16, right? That belongs to the first row. Therefore, your threshold is 1. So right now, what you get is actually 0.75 which is below line one. So all you get is going to be oxygen emission or electron capture, okay? So let's actually how you do all this prediction. Right? Every time you see this keyword radioactive, it means actually this is unstable, right? Then you can actually immediately actually apply to the tables we provide. But if today I just tell you this, okay, if I erase this, first I can ask you, okay, is U-235 stable or not? If that is the question I ask you, okay, what you need to do is actually you check out the periodic table of the U-235. The atomic mass of uranium is actually 238. Okay, and then compared to the mass number you, you have here is actually 235. The difference is actually larger than 2. Then it is unstable. And then once you know it is unstable, then it's undergo a radioactive decay then you will be able to answer, okay, what kind of decay you are going to see. U-235, the atomic number is actually 92. Therefore, you know the number of protons is 92. Number of neutrons is going to equal to 235 minus 92. That's going to give you a number of 143. So from here, then you can actually calculate your N to Z ratio, which is going to equal to 143 divide by 92, and that's going to give you a number of 1.55. Since the Z is actually larger than 83, right, so you will know that, okay, the threshold we provide here is 1.6. If it's actually smaller than 1.6, then you're going to have alpha decay. If it's actually larger, then you have beta decay. So since the number we have is actually 1.55, right, it's actually smaller than 1.6, therefore what you have is going to be alpha decay.